Um. Hey internet, it's Jessica and welcome back to Red Embrace. So, since I did finish the last route, which was Rex, and I asked you guys which route you would like me to do next, and it turns out to be Dominic, of course. So, he is gonna be the next one for this. So in case you guys missed like the beginning of this game and you wanna check out what happens, check out the link in the description. I have a playlist for the entire thing, which is on Isaac's route. So we're just gonna jump straight into Dominic's and see what happens. Chase after Dominic. Dominic doesn't seem to be sticking around, and to be honest, I don't want to either. But he's already close. But he's already close to rounding the corner, so I have to try and hurry if I want to catch him. Some other maybe. Bye bye. <laughs> Chilling out nervously, calling out nervously to approach Rex, I turn to dash after Dominic's disappearing figure. By the time I make it out of the alleyway, he's already heading down the sidewalk. When I jog up next to his side, Dominic casts me a curious skeptical glance. Phew! I'm Connor! I'm the android sent by Cyberlife! <laughs> Hello, Lieutenant. My name is Connor. I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. In case you didn't hear my name earlier. I attempt to start a conversation as I walk beside him, but Dominic gives no reply. He's the silent but deadly type. Uh, where are you heading off to? It was pretty obvious you didn't want to get involved back there. Oh god, with his hand stuffed in his pocket, Dominic hesitates briefly. I'm going to have a smoke. He's, his blunt reply catches me off guard. He sounds completely apathetic, like he doesn't care but one bit about the other vampires or Isaac or and Luca. Right, well, do you mind if I tag along? There are a few questions I really have to ask and you seem to be the only ones sane enough to answer them. After my tentative words, Dominic shows his pace and comes to a halt. He turns to look at me, his eyes widen a little. I didn't say anything weird, did I? For whatever reason, he seems surprised. Uh. Finally, he just shrugs his broad shoulders and starts walking down the street again. I'll choose to interrupt that as sure, whatever, and not go away. I mean, yeah, it's true, if he, if he didn't want us there, he would just be like, can you leave me alone or like, go away? Without any further attempts at conversation, I follow Dominic along a few different roads, heading towards an older part of the city. Around 15 minutes later, we come to an old warehouse. Its peeling paint and decaying its exterior makes it look like it's been abandoned for some time. Dominic ducks under the piece of rotting paneling, disappearing into the dark interior, and I quickly head after him. At last, after going down a few flights of stairs, we emerge into an open space that's dimly lit by fluorescent lights. This- the electricity's on. Wow, do people usually- do people actually still use this place? Seems like it. Offering the insightful remark, Dominic leans back against the wall and slides onto the floor. He pulls a pack of cigarettes and lighter out of his pocket, flicking the ladder until the tiny flame sparks up. After lighting his smoke, he takes a long pull from it, then blows out the tiny gray cloud. Are you going to sit down? Dominic raises an eyebrow at me, jerking his chin towards the floor. Don't mind if I do! With a slightly nervous chuckle, I lower myself down beside him, crossing my legs. Not gonna lie, yeah, this is really awkward. <laughs> this feels so awkward, and I have obviously no clue what's going through Dominic's head right now. Well, I'll just get to the point. I don't think there are any use in making the small talk with this guy. So, if I'm not crazy and everything happens tonight was actually real, then you're a vampire? Dominic stiffly nods. There are more of them then? Vampires in Sanford? He nods again, exhaling another small stream of smoke. There's no change in his expression, and he just watches me with a look of mild curiosity. I pause and bite my lower lip. I don't as to what make all of this. It feels like a dream, but there's no sign. I'm going to wake up soon. And after what I saw tonight, I'm forced to believe something supernatural is going on. Damn it, I really shouldn't have gone out of bed this morning. The, that guy Rex was a vampire too, right? Why does he hate you so much? At that, Dominic averts his eyes for a moment, grimacing slightly. That was obviously no love lost between them, but Dominic seems a lot less eager to fight than Rex did. Yeah, it, it, obviously, like, Rex, like, I think, it, I, from learning about his route, I think it's just because he's trying to impress his, like, clansmates, be like, yeah, we're the best.
better clan, we're the better vampires, blah blah blah. And he doesn't really want to do it, but he's so eager to fight Dominic because he wants to prove to his clan clansmates that, like, yeah, I'm really willing to do this, I'm really willing to be a part of your clan. Even though, in reality, Rex is not like that. And Dominic seems to be the kinder kind of person, but on a quieter note. Because remember, every time, in each route so far, he has come to save us. So... He's, he's from a different clan. Dominic answers with a guarded tone, his gaze hesitantly returning to my face. Clan? Oh, right, Luca mentioned something like that. Rex is from a different one than you? Yeah, he's Helgen. I'm with Siri. That's with a small hint of disgust in his voice, and his face darkens a little. He thinks that clans are like family or something, that they're important. Guess he doesn't see what a joke it is, what, what a joke it all is. So you're not into the whole clan thing, huh? I get that, I always hated fraternities and shit back in college. My half-hearted joke makes Dominic crack a smile. Oh, well, okay, that's good, which softens the shadow on his face. When I look at his heavy-lidded eyes, I don't see anything that resembles a monster. If someone had told me that he was a vampire this morning, I would have called him crazy. He's quiet and awkward, sure, but he's not scary at all when he smiles like that. That's good, at least we made him smile! <laughs> uh, yeah, before I forget, I really appreciate you saving me back there with Rex. You seem like some kind of superhero, coming to my rescue just in the nick of time. I shiver as my mind flashes back to the terrifying sight of those fangs, right before they plunged into my neck. It's fine, I was just passing through. He evasively turns his head away from me, taking another pull from his cigarette and avoiding my gaze. I'm not, you know, I'm not entirely sure which one is like the canon route in this game, um, assuming that there is one, but I feel like it might be Dominic, I don't know. Is it my imagination, or does he look kind of embarrassed? No, that can't be right. Talk about a crazy string of coincidences, though. I can't believe you know Isaac and Luca, too. When I mention their names, Dominic pulls a face, grinding his cigarette down against the concrete floor. I don't know them. They know us. He grimly stares into the distance, and looks like he doesn't plan to explain further unless I ask. You mean, they know the other vampires in the city? Isaac does. He sells information and guns, playing both clans for money. That kid Luca is his sidekick. You shouldn't mess around with them. Well, I mean, he messed around with Connor, let's be honest here. <laughs> Dominic runs a hand through his long, messy hair, letting out a tired sigh. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. They don't sound like great guys, to be honest. I'm not sure why, but I feel sympathy for Dominic, even though he's not human. If I caught up with all this- If I was caught up in all this craziness, I'd probably just want to escape too. No wonder he looks so gloomy all the time. Why were you out here to- Why were you out there tonight? He's, his sudden question breaks the silence, and I glance over to see him gazing at me with interest. I was looking for you! I was just curious. Um... Well, I mean... Well, it is true, because when Isaac was just like, your friend is gonna be there, he was talking about Dominic. So... I don't know, I don't want to sound like, like, oh, you know, I was just looking for you, Dominic, but in reality, like, Connor's just really curious as to, like, what's going on, but I don't want to sound like a dick. I'm gonna say, I guess he was looking for him, because the intent of, like, your friend is gonna be there, so I'll just say that. If I'm honest, I think it's because I was looking for you. He tells his head in confusion at my response, and I awkwardly laugh. <laughs> Isaac said something about a customer of mine showing up, and I guess subconsciously I thought he meant you. I wanted to say thanks for the generous tip, after all. Ooh, yeah, that's right, he just dumped his entire wallet. <laughs> For a moment, Dominic just stares at me for it with an apparent su surprise. He had forgotten about the tip he left? Eventually, he turns his head away from me, but I can see the faint smirk briefly flicker over his mouth. It was good coffee. <laughs> he mutters something so quickly that I can barely make it out. Come again? Oh, instead of my reply, Dominic rather abruptly pushes himself off to his feet, turning to me with a mere serious expression. He hesitates after opening his mouth, lowering his head a little. Isaac put you in a lot of danger. His slow, husky voice takes on a sharper edge all of a sudden. Humans who know about us are a threat. Rex will tell the other Helgen about you. When that happens, word will spread fast. Someone will come after you, probably by tomorrow night. Dominic's eyes narrow, and he pushes for and he pauses for a long moment. Until they forgot, until they forget you and start hunting someone else. You shouldn't be alone in the dark. His words sense a cold tinge through me, and a knot curls in the pit of my stomach. Troy's out of town for a little while, so I can't just take off work, and there's no way I can afford the taxi every night. 
And even when he gets back, who's to say that they won't be coming after me? I can't stay inside my house forever. I'll get a gun, or a knife, or something like that. I'll find some way to defend myself. Dominic shakes his head, letting out a long exile. That won't work. What do you mean it won't work? You can't ex just expect him to- I'll help you. There you go! <laughs> At his ex unexpected offer, I freeze, my mouth hanging open. Is- is he seriously saying he'll protect me? Aren't I a threat to them? Shouldn't I be working- shouldn't he working be- shouldn't he be working against me? Before- but before I can ask why he'd do something so crazy, Dominic turns his back to me, murmuring a few last words. I'll come to the diner tomorrow. Don't do anything stupid. And with that, with the parting command, he stalks off and towards the stairs, his long strides carrying him out of sight for a few moments. I'm left speechless, standing alone only with Dominic's disregarded, discarded cigarette for company. The hum of dim, fluorescent lights around me is all that disrupts the dead silence. I don't know what to think. Dominic, I didn't do anything to deserve his help, but he's going to give it to me anyway. I mean, he's been doing that all along, if I'm being honest, right? Like, every single story so far, he's just coming to the rescue. Normally, I feel indigenous, but if somehow I made it myself a target of vampires who are anything like Rex, well, I'd be an idiot to refuse Dominic. And for some reason, I feel like I can trust him. I don't know why, but there's something comforting about being with Dominic. It's like having a guardian wolf, almost. Guardian wolf. Man, did I just walk out of some trashy fantasy book? I mean... <laughs> Muttering to myself dryly, I slip out of the warehouse, gripped by a growing fear. Here we go, back at the diner! At that moment, the door swings open, the sight of a new customer interrupts my thoughts. Hello, welcome to the- Dominic? Sure enough, the tall, intimidating figure before me is the same one I spoke to last night. When he sees my shock reaction, however, Dominic's expression darkens somewhat. Why do you look so surprised? I told you I'd come. There was a very- there was a very slight wounded hint of in his voice, as if my lack of trust makes him unhappy. I mean, well, it's not our- entirely our fault. I guess he's offended because he thinks like, oh, you think I'm like the stereotypical vampire who will like hunt people. I get the feeling he's not like that. Like, he just d wants to do his own thing. Um, unlike Rex. Rex isn't like that either, but Rex is just kind of like, I have to impress other people, which is why he's following what they do. But Dominic is definitely an independent kind of guy. Sorry, I'm a bit too jaded to believe in, in knights in shining armor. Although, I guess I can make an ex exception for knights in baggy jackets. Now I feel guilty for downing him, even though I think it was pretty justified, all things considered. Are you ready to go? His eyes soften faintly after my apology, but there's still a tense look in his face. He's probably thinking about what will happen if we get caught by other vampires. Well, he's not the only one who's worried. I'm ready, you want a cup of coffee or something before we leave? It's not exactly blood or anything, but... Jeez, that sounded stupid, should've kept my mouth shut. I'm fine, thanks. Dominic gazes at me for a moment, the corners of his lips curling ever so slightly upwards. Hey, you got a little smile a little bit! <laughs> That's the third time already! Then he turns towards the door, beckoning me to follow. After I grab my things, we head outside into the dark streets. It's pretty deserted this time of night, so only people on the sidewalk are me and Dominic. He moves at a pretty fast clip, his eyes darting around us warily, flicking towards any kind of movement, whether it's a stray mouth or a fluttering plastic bag. Can't help but notice how close he is to my side too. His arm brushes against mine every couple of seconds. Oh, is he getting embarrassed? A little embarrassed, yeah. <laughs> I, sh I shift a couple inches away, but he ends up closing the gap again from a few months later. You're going to fall off the sidewalk. <laughs> at his amused comment, I realize I drifted too close to the curb that I'm almost on the street. Well, whose fault is that? This guy, he's got a mean sense of humor. <clears throat> so, do you have any family around San Fran? When I try to change the subject, Dominic shoots me a sharp look. Yeesh, did I stumble on touchy sub topics? You don't have to answer if you don't want to. I mean, it's gotta be complicated with the whole vampire thi- East Coast. He, mur he murmurs flatly, avoiding my gaze for a moment. They're out on the east coast. They don't know where I am. He sounded guilty, as if he ran away without saying anything. Did he come out of here to get away from his family then? Or maybe he was trying to protect them, like he's trying to protect me now. Oh, uh, probably. Probably, right? I, I think it's the latter, like he's trying to protect his family. So, I'm gonna say it must be hard. I feel kind of bad, because you can tell he wants to be with them, but he can't. You must miss them. I bet they're worried sick about you if they don't already think you're dead. After a brief pause, Dominic nods. 
I can't help but think he looks terribly lonely. Shadows grooving deeply in his tired features. I'm sorry, I can't really put myself in your shoes, but I know it must be hard. He offers me a faint smirk, although there's nothing happy about it. Don't see a point of self-pity. It's just how things are now. Dominic's eyes drift off to the light, polluted sky as we walk along, and I follow his gaze. There are no stars, just dark, moody clouds that look like a billowing smoke. My brother's getting married soon. Oh, how did you find out? Saw it in the newspaper. In the newspaper? People still do that? <laughs> his broad shoulders slump a little, even though his voice remains steady. There's no way for you to go? Dominic shakes his head, tightly closing his eyes. I can't face them like this. He sounds, a, he sounds so bitter that it makes my chest hurt a little. I have a feeling that he doesn't get any joy out of, out of being a vampire. Whatever powers it must give, the costs are probably a lot worse. If I were you, I'd just go anyway. Screw the risk. If they don't like you how you are now, tough luck. It's not like you can do anything about it. I realize after the words leave my mouth that I probably sounded like a little insensitive. Oh well. Oh, at least he's smiling somewhat. I mean, like, I know we don't know, like, the situation, but, like, Connor's being sweet. When I glance over to him, I notice Dominic watching me with a smile. Wasn't he just brooding a second ago? Did I say something stupid again? <laughs> to my shock, Dominic reaches out with a large, with his large hands, suddenly ruffling my hair. His fingers tussle through my strands, messing up them playfully. The touch of his hands is softer than I expected, but I can't believe that it's the same hand that was swinging punches at Rex last night. He pulls back before long, though, and I hurry to smooth my messy hair. Where did that come from? Jeez, warn a guy first. Don't worry about it. Dominic shakes his head, and his smile fades soon afterwards. He really doesn't stay bright for long after a few seconds, does he? Like the sun flickering out between clouds. I mean, the guy seems depressed, so I don't really blame him. You're different. Huh? Here he goes again, su saying stuff out of the blue. How am I supposed to keep up? Yesterday, Rex jumped you because you had a different scent. A different scent? What do you mean? Hesitating, Dominic averts his gaze to one side, narrowing them with uncertainty. It's something special. It makes your blood sweeter to us, but... If you were turned, then... What? Then what? Dominic suddenly freezes. I stop beside him, glancing around in confusion. Then what? Dominic? What's going- Ah! The next second, he grabs my hand and breaks into a sprint. Completely baffled, I run with him as fast as I can, and we dash into the nearby alley at top speed. It's happening. Dominic, what the hell is going on? Behind us. Dominic's voice growls out urgently over the sound of uh, our footsteps. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! When I throw a glance over my shoulder, there are several figures hurling towards us, one of them on all fours. Hey, where are you guys going? Come back! A familiar sing-song voice calls out to us gleefully, echoing in the alleyway. Oh god, Rex! <laughs> Ignore them. My eyes go as wide as I recognize the voice, but Dominic immediately grips my hand harder. Are you guys on a date? You didn't even invite me. Oh no! He's gonna be like, he's gonna be like an asshole because he's with his classmates, right? Oh. Rex mock, mo Rex's mocking words ring out behind us as we keep running, taking every twist and turn we can. Ugh. It's hard for me to keep up with Dominic, whose legs are long and powerful, propelled with him forward. Um. Whose, legs are, whose long legs are and powerful body propel him forward with incredible speed. You can't get away from me, baby! I can catch the scent from miles away! Come on, Dom, share him with us! You want to keep him for yourself, don't you? Greedy bastard! <laughs> Dominic grits his teeth together, his eyes flashing with visible anger. Uh-oh. A cold scent breaks out onto my back as Rex taunts us. Dominic? No, Dominic's different from them. He's not keeping me around for that, there's no way! Quick inside! Suddenly, Dominic shoves me through the side door of a building. I stumble through the darkness and he pulls my hand to tug me in further. Where- where are we- Huh? Oh, we're in a club! The dimly lit space we emerge into is... A club? Blended. He leans down and hisses into my ear, blushing, brushing his lips against it so that I can hear his voice over the loud music. Without missing a beat, Dominic guides me into the dance floor, weaving through the throngs of people. I glance wearily over my shoulder to see if Rex and the others are falling, but I can't make out anything in the dark. Uh-oh. But when I turn back, I realize Dominic isn't pulling me along anymore. Instead, he's facing me, and his blue eyes glimmer faintly in the flashing lights. Dominic, are we going to- Shh! 
what's happening now? <laughs> and just like that, he starts to curl his arm around my waist, tugging me towards him. Oh, 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 oh! <laughs> my first reaction is to pull away, but I realize what he's doing after a few seconds. He wants to dance here so that the other vampires will lose our scent in the middle of these people? They probably can't attack us in a place like this even if they do find us. I guess it's a pretty smart plan. Oh, we're gonna dance with him! Again, why? We're gonna blend in! Although my cheeks start to flush a little from the sun and closeness, I hesitantly slide my arms around Dominic, grasping the fabric of his jacket. He's really tall, and has his eyes always been that blue? They're so clear that I can see myself in them. Almost. Okay, Carter, this is not the time to be checking him out, okay? Oh, <laughs> check them. See, it's cute, but at the same time, they're in danger, so it's not like an appropriate time, you know what I mean? You have to dance, not just stare. He murmurs to me, his deep voice reverberating in my ears over a heavy bass. He yeah, sorry. It's just been a while since I did this, and that's all. I awkwardly start to move a little with the music, avoiding Dominic's gaze. I feel like he's enjoying this a lot more than he should be, considering the situation. I mean, well, he's, he's not the one in danger, it's Connor. <laughs> the club is so packed with people that it's practically a zoo, but after a while I didn't notice them as much. My heartbeat should be slowing down now that we've stopped running, yet it's still pounding on my own. Dominic doesn't bother to glancing around for the other vampires at all, instead he's just watching me. His eyes seem to glow a little in the dark, gazing at my face with an unusual intense look. You're gonna make me self-conscious watching me like that. I hope you're staring at me because my hair is on point, not because I look like dinner. <laughs> my mother, my mother is swallowed up by the music, but there's a chance Dominic heard me because his lips curl into a sly grin. The tips of his fangs glimmer faintly as they catch the light, simultaneously deadly and beautiful. Normally I hate clubs, but I'd be lying if I said this wasn't sort of fun. There's a chance Rex and the others are still inside watching us, but it's hard for me to think about when Dominic squeezes in my hips, pressing against me to the beat of the music. But really, how the hell did it turn out to be some kind of weird date? It really doesn't feel like we're just acting to throw off the vampires anymore. That or Dominic deserves an Oscar. Shit, I didn't intend for things to end up like this. You want a drink? <laughs> okay! <laughs> Dominic casually leans in to mutter a question in my ear. What kind of question is that? We came here to ditch Rex and his crew, not get wasted. Man, now I seriously feel like a feels like a date. Awkward, an awkward, spontaneous date. Although judging from Dominic's smirk at my flustered response, his only goal with that question was to make me embarrassed. He's gonna set this extreme to balance out his generosity and all right. Oh no. <laughs> How about you? You want a drink? Now that you mentioned it. My eyes widen when Dominic actually nods, a teasing light flashing in his eyes. Wait, he must mean- no, seriously? Only if you're offering though, I won't force you. A gentle- <laughs> oh my god, he gently squeezes my waist, making me relax a little, but I hesitate. Can I really trust him like this? Um, I don't know. Well, what happens if I say yeah? Well, I'm a little curious about it, I'll admit. Just don't drain me dry, okay? That would be really shitty for a state. <laughs> for a split second, Dominic looked shocked, like he wasn't even expecting me to answer. It's like Rex when he was teasing. Before I know it, he reaches down to grab me, tugging my body tightly against his chest. What? What? He's actually gonna do it? What? Just relax. His hot whis whispers fill my ear as if he just flipped the switch. My anxiety starts to fade. It gets hard to think about anything other than Dominic, and even as I close my eyes and tilt my head back, all I can envision is the, his eager gaze. Something sharp starts to tease along my skin, dragging a line from my collar to the side of my neck. I feel his wet tongue flickering against a certain spot, followed by a brush of his lips. Then he pauses, and everything in the world seems to freeze for a moment. What the hell?! What?! Okay, apparently, apparently he, he wants this. All right. The stabbing pain shoots through my body, making my eyes water and my stomach do an awful backflip. My first instinct is to try to shove Dominic away, but I force myself to stay calm. And then, bit by bit, the pain begins to sweeten. Oh. <laughs> 
As he holds me tightly in his arms, burying his face against my neck, I start to feel a little busy, my skin growing hotter and hotter, and an unusual heat bubbles in the base of my spine. <laughs> Somehow I managed to hear Dominic's low growl, but it feels like his voice is almost coming from inside my head. The pounding bass fades far into the distance, it's all I can hear and feel is Dominic, his fangs buried in my face as he suckles hungrily at my flesh. This is, this is complete surrender. If he wanted to, he could drain me dry right now and no one would notice. It's too dark and crowded. But I don't feel scared. My heart's pounding a mile a minute, but all I can think of is giving myself to him. More and more. Oh, okay! Sure! Why not? <laughs> when Dominic finally pulls back, looking at the red drops off his upper lip, I struggle to catch my breath. He must have noticed my reaction because he gives me a long, feral smirk and brushes his fingertips against my throat. It was hard keeping it all to myself. <laughs> Especially with you squirming against me like that. Can't, can't have been bad for you, huh? Oh, shit. A cute embarrassment makes my light head in his vanish, and I know my face is to be the same color as a cherry. Damn, go easy on me next time, asshole. Just about drain me dry. Yeah, you didn't seem to mind. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> And the last traces of the incredible sensation gra gradually fades away. I can't help but feel happy at Dominic's reaction. He pulls me into another dance and I notice his eyes are burning brighter. His usual cool expression now warm and eager. Even if his skin feels a little hot, like a, like a part of him is alive again, and there's something strangely bittersweet about that thought. Okay guys, I'm gonna end it right there. <laughs> I really didn't think that was gonna happen. I thought he was joking. But then again, the way that Connor describes Dominic, he seems like he has a demeanor of like he's in control all the time. Like he's he like he's a dominant. Like you know what I mean? Like I get that feeling from him. So I guess he was completely serious, but I think it's funny because like the po the entire point of them going to the club was to get away from Rex. But then he turned it into like, hey, I'm just gonna dance with this guy. Why not take a drink out of him too? <laughs> Oh my god. Anyway, you guys let me know in the comments what you think. And if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you know when I upload the next Run and Brace episode. And thank you once again to RG Games for sending me a game key. I really did not expect this. Holy crap. Anyway, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye! It's not every day a girl gets rescued by a tall, muscular, handsome man. <laughs> Natalie, please! What's wrong? Are you jealous? Forward or develop another character. Video game deaths can be tragic. Here are six sad character deaths from video games. Roman, Grand Theft Auto 4.